The table below shows some elements in the periodic table as you can see now this is the periodic table and take note those letters are not the exact letters or the exact chemical uh, the chemical symbols for the elements which are being represented so those are just uh, jumbled or random letters that you are going to use so the second part of the question is asking use it to answer the question that follows and then we are also being told that the letters do not represent or the letters are not the actual symbols of the elements that we have there in so let's continue so as you can see this is the periodic table that we have so for the periodic table we know uh, we see that in group number one we have p and v whereby for group number one remember we say that they are called the alkali metals so not alkaline metals they are called alkali metals so uh, element p and v they are in group one which is called alkali metal so why are they called alkali metals so remember in the previous classes we say that group one are called alkali metals because they form very strong basic solutions so since they form very strong basic solutions that's why they are called alkali metals because of that property they form strong basic solution so after that we see that we have element k which is in group number two so in group number two, remember I said that the elements are referred to as alkaline earth metals, not alkali earth. If you say alkali earth, you get it wrong. So they are called alkaline earth metals. So why are group two elements referred to as alkaline earth metals? So they are called like so because they are found buried deep inside the earth's crust. So since they are found buried deep inside the earth's crust, that's why the members of group two are referred to as alkaline earth metals so apart from that you see that we have uh, the element q and t so element q and t so these are called salt producers or halogen so these are basically group seven members and then you have uh, letter r which is in group number eight so group number eight they're referred to as the noble gases they're referred to as the rare gases or they're referred to as the inert gases so why are they called inert gases they are called inert gases because once they were thought not to be reactive so inert means unreactive so the first name given to group eight elements was inert gases so they were first called inert gases whereby this name was later changed from inert gases to noble gases so these days group eight are called noble gases so uh, like we see the name inert gases also fits because this group they are called inert gases noble gases or rare gases but why are these why were these elements called inert gases so they are called inert gases because they were thought not to be reactive most of them are unreactive but some of them were found to be reactive whereby we saw that xenon could be able to react with fluorine so since xenon could react with fluorine therefore the name was later changed to noble gases noble gases uh, for group eight so remember the first name they were called inert gases because they were thought not to be reactive however xenon was found to be uh, to be able to react with fluorine whereby fluorine you see it's the most electronegative element which is a very strong nonmetal. so this very strong nonmetal could be able to react with xenon so since xenon could be able to react with fluorine therefore the name was the name of this group was later changed from inert gases to noble gases so remember inert means unreactive so since xenon was found to be able to react so the name was changed from inert gases to noble gases because some elements were found to be able to react now let's go to now the first question uh, in this periodic table so the first question is asking an element k has atomic number of 20 whereby we can see element k so the position of element k remember that is group number two so I'm being told that an element K has atomic number of 20. Indicate this on the grid above. So indicate the element K on the grid above. So for the element K, we're going to indicate it exactly there. But how did we know that element K should fit there and not in a place lambda where R is or Q is or T is? It's exactly where we have indicated. So why did we decide that this element is going to stay there and not anywhere else? So if you've been asked such a question in an exam the first thing that you should do so first of all write the electronic configuration of that element that you have been told so in this case we see that we have element uh, that is element k 
So for this element k, uh, we see that we have been told that element k has atomic number of 20. So since this element k has atomic number of 20, so the first thing that you should do, you should first of all write the electronic configuration of this element k. So for the electronic configuration of element k, we see that the configuration is 2, 8, 8, 2. That is number 20. So 2 for the first energy level, 8 for the second energy level, 8 again for the third energy level, and then 2 for the last energy level to give us a total of 20 electrons that you have been asked that element K has. So as soon as now we have the electronic configuration, so we're going to look at the last value. So the last value, is, uh, the last value all, always tells us the group number to which this element belongs. So you see that this element now belongs to group number two. Why? Because the last value is a two number. So the last value, remember, in a configuration always tells us the group that the elements belong. And then the number of energy levels. So in this case, we have the first energy level having two, the second energy level having eight, the third energy level having eight, and then the fourth energy level having a two. So it means that it has four energy levels to mean that it is in period number four. So that is that. So it is in period number four uh, because, of, uh, because of the four energy levels. And then it is found in group number two because the last value of the configuration is a two. Therefore, uh, the element K can be found in group number two. So we locate group one, group two, and then we count four periods. So it's in period one, period two, period three, period four. So in group two, period four, that is the location of element K, and that's how we have indicated element K as to be on that position on the grid where we have indicated it. So the second question is asking, write the formula of the compound formed between V and S. So write the formula of the compound which is formed between element V and element S. So uh, like you can come to the periodic table and count where this element V is, the atomic number, and element S, where the element S is. As well, uh, like we can just look at the group and the period uh, whereby this element belongs, and then we write the configuration in order to be able to get correctly the, the chemical formula that is going to be formed between these two elements. So we have been asked about element V and element S. So, looking at element V, we see that this element V is in period number 4, and then it is in group number 1. So, by knowing that it is in period number 4, then group number 1, so the configuration automatically becomes 2881. So, why did you say 2881? So, the last value of the configuration is always the group number. So, in, since we know that, it is in group number 1, so we know that the last value automatically is a 1. Therefore, after that, we can see that it is in period number 4, because if we count... All the periods you see that it is in period number four so it means that the first energy level is full with the electrons the second energy level is full with the electrons the third energy level is full with the electrons and then now the fourth energy level is now the group number whereby this element belongs so in this in this case it means that this element v has atomic number of 19 because if we count two eight that is uh, 10 if we count, if we add again 8, that is 18, and then 1, that is 19. So that the configuration becomes 2, 8, 8, 1. So the next element that we have been asked is element S, whereby for element S we see that it is in period number 3, and then it is in group number 6. So since it's in period 3 and group number 6, automatically you know that this element has atomic number of 16. Whereby since it has atomic number of 16, its configuration automatically becomes 2, 8, 6. So for the element V, we have gotten that it is in period number, it is in period four, then group number one. So since it's group number one, it is easier for this element to lose one electron than to gain seven electrons in order to become stable. Therefore, this element V is going to react by losing one electron. Therefore, the valency of V becomes one. So for the element S, we know that it is in period, uh, period three and group number six. Therefore, since it is in group number 6, it will mean that it is easier for this element to gain 2 electrons in order to become stable than to lose the 6 electrons in order to become stable. So automatically it means that for element S, it has a valency of 2 negative because it is easier for it to gain the 2 electrons in order to become stable. So the valency of V, remember we have seen that the valency of V is 1 which is positive and then the valency of S is 2 negative. So by knowing the valencies of these elements, therefore it is easier for us now to write the chemical compound which is going to be formed between element V 
and element S. Therefore, if we react element V, which has a state symbol of solid, with element S, which has a state symbol of also solid, uh, yeah, which has a state symbol of also solid, so you see that these two are going to interchange the valency. So the valency of S is going to go below V, the valency of V is going to go below S. And then remember, since we don't indicate valency of 1, for the element S, we are going to leave it like that to seem blank. But again, remember we say that if you only see an element is blank without any value below it, automatically no, the value below it is 1. Therefore, to answer our question, so the question is asking, write the formula of compound form between element V and element S. Therefore, this compound is going to be V2S. It's going to be V2S. So this V2, this 2 means that this is the valency of the S. And then below S we have a 1. Uh, like whereby this one is the valency of now the V that has reacted with the S. So that is how to indicate that the, chem uh, the chemical formula between element V and element S. So the next question, uh, which is letter C. So let's look at letter C. So letter C is asking, which, ele which element belongs to period 2 and group 8? So which element belongs to period 2 and group 8? So this is simple. So you'll we'll just check the periodic table. So count the number of period, period 1, period 2. So we are in period 2. Then we have been told group number 8. So count all the groups up to group number 8 to identify the element. So this element will identify this element as element R. So element R is the element which is in period 2 and group number 8. So after that, let's now go to question letter D. So question letter D is asking, write the electronic configuration of the following elements. Now this one was very simple. So write the configuration of the following elements. So the first element is element P. So if you look at the grid, we'll see that the element P is in period 2 and group number 1. So it means that it has atomic number of 3. So since, since it has atomic number of 3, so the configuration in this case is going to be 2, 1, because it has only 3 electrons. So Roman 2 was asking element Q. So for element Q, remember we see that it is in period 2 and group number 7. So since it's in period 2, group number 7, it means that it has an atomic number of 9. So since it has atomic number of 9, so the configuration is going to be 2, 7. So if you add 2 plus 7, you're going to get 9, which are the total electrons for element Q. So apart from that, we go to the Roman 3. So Roman 3 is asking element S. So element S, we had looked at it before. So you see that element S has a configuration of 2, 8, 6, because it is in period 3 and group number 6. So the atomic number of element S is 16, remember? So since it's 16, so the configuration automatically is going to become 2, 8, 6. So if you add 2 plus 8, you're going to get 10. 10 plus 6, you're going to get 16. Whereby 16 now resembles the atomic number of element S.